MLB The Show 24 has been out for a little over three days now, and we've learned which cards are really good and which cards are not that great. So today, I'm going to tell you the 15 most needed cards to build the best God Squad possible in MLB The Show 24. Now, there are some cards that I'm just simply not going to be talking about, and that's cards that are basically like over 200k or 99 or 95 overalls. You know that if you have those cards, you want to use them, so I don't even have to explain those to you. If you have 99 Babe Ruth, you're going to be using him at this point in the game, so I'm not going to say he's one of the most needed cards because you already know that. I'm starting out with the card that I personally have on my own team in this 89 overall Carlos Correa. Now, this is a free card, and he's just incredible. His attributes are not the greatest out of any card you'll ever see. However, his swing is just even better than usual this year, and he normally has one of the best swings in the game. He has really good contact, really good clutch, and his power is good enough, while the fielding is also diamond. This is a very good card, and I think it's one card that you should really be going after in Team Affinity. The fact that it's free makes this a must-have card, in my opinion. We're going on to another free card, and as you can see, I already have this card parallel 3 because I think it's that good. Dylan Cruz. This 89 overall Dylan Cruz is the big card from the Spring Breakout program, and it's just incredible. You see the attributes across the board, over 80 hitting stats and all the important contacts and powers, plus 85 speed out of the box, and 81 fielding. This card also has a nice swing, and if you look at my online stats with him. He's been really good so far. That's something that you can say about him. I think you should get this card if you don't have it yet. And if you do have it, make sure you're starting him because he's really good. Moving on to the third card, I'm going to be talking about 88 overall Byron Buxton, and it's mainly because of the captain boost. If you have 11 players with under 60 vision on your squad, which there are a lot of good players that do meet those requirements, you are going to be getting plus 15 power versus both sides and plus 10 fielding and 10 speed as well. Buxton is always just one of those cards that play above his attributes and he has 100 power versus both sides. Add in the 95 speed this is a really good card and you should probably have him as your cornerstone. You also get him for free for just opening the game, so I'd probably use him if you have him. We're going to move on to the first pitcher of the video, and it's going to be a relief pitcher in Andrew Miller. I really like this card. I've only used him in events, so his ERA is not great because you can't pitch in events, but it's not bad compared to every other pitcher that I have used so far. Andrew Miller has really good stats. 110 hits per nine with the parallel two like I have it. 125 clutch, really solid control for a relief pitcher, that glitchy wind up a left hander, and 99 velocity, 99 break, and he has a slider and a sinker. This is a really good card and it's only 27k right now. I would buy this quickly before the game actually launches tomorrow because he's going to go up in price once more people get their hands on him. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Jose Abreu is a must-have card in this game. Jose Abreu has always been really bad in MLB The Show, but this year they did something to his swing that just makes him a lot better. You can see his stats versus lefties. At minimum, this card has to be on your bench just because of that platoon ability versus lefties, although his stats versus righties are just as good almost. Like, they're still also incredible. Obviously, if you can DH him, it's better because his fielding is really bad and the speed is never going to be there with Jose Abreu. However, they also updated his swing this year, and it's actually pretty good now. He's a free card as well. If you're grinding through Team Affinity and you have this card, you gotta throw him on your bench. He's very serviceable. Now, this card has been a big surprise for me. He's compared to Corey Seager in real life, and I can compare him to him in the game too, because he is really good. Colson Montgomery's 89 overall spring breakout. This is another free card. You get him along the path that you're getting the Dylan Cruz in. So if you do complete that, you're getting this card and Dylan Cruz, who I say are both needed cards. So you better be completing that as fast as possible. As you can see with the hitting attributes across the board, they're really good with 99 clutch, which is going to make that contact even better in a big situation. Along with that, the fielding is 85 across the board, pretty much 70 speed. If you look at my stats online in 38 at bats, he's batting 421. And if you want to look offline, I've been CPU grinding. He's pretty good at that, too. So Colson Montgomery, if you have him, he's got to be playing shortstop or third base for you. He's that good. Next up, I'm moving on to another card that you could have gotten for free day one, and that's Josh Gibson. The fact that this card can play catcher is extremely valuable, in my opinion, and his swing and stats are just really good. Now, he does have a weird glitch with him where every 
time you make contact with the ball, it sounds like you hit the perfect, perfect home run that went further than any other perfect, perfect home run ever. But who cares? It's just an audio glitch. Gibson, if you look at my stats with him online, again, it's really good. He's batting 450 and 31 at bats with three home runs. He's just been incredible for me. His swing is really nice and his attributes are really nice as well. You can also play him anywhere in the field, but he's definitely most valuable at catcher. Coming in at the eighth card on the list is maybe the most valuable card in the game before this glitch is patched, and that's John Donaldson. The reason why this card is so valuable is because you can use him every game game out of the bullpen and he'll always have full stamina. It's a stupid glitch that they really need to fix ASAP, but while it's still in the game, he's the best card in the game because he's really solid and you can use him every single game out of the bullpen with his 103 stamina, he can go the whole game. He has really solid pitches, really good attributes, really good quirks. He gets outlier on the slider once again and outlier on the fastball, so he's going to be throwing extremely hard. And if you really wanted to, you could use him as a two-way player, which it's not worth it doing that, but he's only 20k, so you should buy this card if you don't have him, because you can literally use him every game. It's broken. We're going to another pitcher, this time in the bullpen, with Jose Leclerc. Leclerc is one of those cards that are always really hard to hit. He has 129 hit nine this year, which means that that PCI is going to be extremely small. He also has really good clutch, really good home run nine, really good K nine, and obviously 99 velocity because he's a Jose Leclerc card. He has a glitchy windup and he throws 102 miles per hour. That's about all you need. Plus five pitches as a relief pitcher is incredible. This card is very needed and he's free through team affinity. So just grind through team affinity and throw this card in your bullpen. Another team affinity free card that is also on my team is 89 overall Billy Wagner. This card is not quite as good as Leclerc. However, it's always valuable to have lefties and especially right now because I think there's a lot of really good lefties in this game. And I mean lefty hitters, not lefty pitchers. His hit nine is really good. His clutch is maxed out and his pitches are all right. Billy Wagner cards are generally pretty good in this game. So if I were you, I would definitely try him out. A flame throwing left-hander is always good to have in your bullpen. Finally, moving on to a hitter again, we have 91 over Overall, Mickey Mantle. As like every Mickey Mantle card is, he's a switch hitter, which helps him out a lot. I think this is actually the first switch hitter that I've talked about in this video because there aren't very many of them at this point in the game. However, you can see he has diamond hitting with diamond defense. His defense isn't really that great though, even though it is diamond and his speed is 85, which is lower than most Mantle cards, but it's still really good. His hitting attributes are all right too. He's not the best card I've ever used, but a lot of people love his stance and swing. For 20K, I would definitely try him out. He also has the two most important quirks in the game in dead red and breaking ball hitter, which means he's gonna hit fastballs and breaking balls better than other players. This is a good card. You should definitely try him out if you have the stubs to do so. Next on my list is easily the most expensive card of the video so far, and it's 90 overall live series Corey Seager. There's not much to say about this card other than it's just one of the best hitting cards in the game. I honestly think that it's better than Mike Trout and probably a couple of the other top tier live series cards in the game because of his attributes, his swing, and also his quirks. Don't sleep on quirks because he has more than Trout and better ones than Trout, so he's important to have. And with every Corey Seager card, he has one of the best swings in the game, if not the best. And this year, I think it's gotten even better. It's a little bit faster than normal, and it's just incredible. Three players left, and we're starting it out with Johan Santana, who's a new legend for MLB The Show 24. He's a left-handed starting pitcher, but his attributes are not the best. However, his pitches are kind of the best. He has a circle change, slider, sinker, and cutter, along with the four-seam fastball. Doesn't get much better than that in terms of pitch selection. However, his quirks don't really matter, and like I said, his attributes are not great. Although, if he does have a runner in scoring position, he will be a better pitcher because of that pitching clutch. His velocity is also not as high as a lot of other guys in the game, so far, but I don't know. This card has just been really hard to hit when I've faced him. I haven't used him yet, but if John Donaldson does get patched, I think that this is a pretty must-have card. For the final pitcher on the list, I'm going with the second most expensive player so far, and it is 90 overall Paul Skeens. If you used Paul Skeens last year, you know how good he was, and I think he got better because now he has a cutter, which I don't think he had last year. He also has outlier on the fastball, so he's going to be throwing 
throwing 102 mile per hour fastballs. And as you can see, the attributes across the board are just a little bit better than Johan Santana, so he's just a really good card. He throws pitches extremely hard, and he's really deceptive with a funky arm motion. And the final card of the video is a card that I just picked up, and it is 89 overall Cedric Mullins. Mullins is a really solid card with really good attributes, a really good swing, decent fielding, and decent speed. Mullins cards are always very good in MLB The Show, and I expect that to continue this year. Every time I've faced him so far in events and ranked, it has not gone super well. And that's it. Those were the 15 most needed cards in MLB The Show 24. If you liked the video, please like and consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video.